Hey guys, I'm Combat Craig, and today I'm talking about the importance of secondary service connection claims. In order to file a secondary service connection claim, you need to have something that's already service connected, then you file a secondary onto it. I'll explain more. So I'm going to use the back as an example. So let's say you have a low ball 10% rating for your back. You know it's a low ball rating. It's causing all sorts of problems, but that's what you have to work with. You could file secondary service connections onto that 10% uh, lower back rating and bring your overall disability rating up. That is the importance of secondary service connections. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you some secondary service connections that you could file to your lower back. We're going to go into five of them in depth. And then we're going to look at the possible VA ratings that you could get if you get those things successfully service connected. And I'm going to show you an image um, of the lower back and show you some range of motion stuff and how the VA measures things. And then I'm going to show you one more image about all the little joints and what parts of the body they affect because your back affects your entire body. So if you want to further your education about the VA claims process, Head over to CombatCraig.com and sign up for my boot camp. This is the kind of stuff that I have in the boot camp, and I go in-depth in the description. All right, so here are five common secondary service connections for lower back pain, which is an orthopedic condition. Um, but these types of secondary claims can apply to any orthopedic condition. We're kind of focused on the back. And I have all of these things in one form or another. So they're radiculopathy, secondary to back pain, arthritis, secondary to back pain, depression, secondary to back pain, knee conditions, secondary to back pain, and plantar fasciitis, secondary to back pain. So the reason I know that I have these problems is I got an MRI in my lower back and it revealed that I have a 10 millimeter herniated disc at the L5 S1 joint. So that is the source of the problems. An MRI, by the way, is considered solid, objective medical evidence. I've had these problems in my body, but I didn't know where it stemmed from. And then once I went to an orthopedic surgeon, got the MRI, things started making sense. Um, I do get uh, shots in my back once a year to relieve the radiculopathy, and I do other things for the plantar fasciitis. Um, but you have to start somewhere and figure out, like, where is the source of all this pain coming from? And then you need to start figuring out, how am I going to get these uh, service connected on a secondary basis? Let's run through these. Radiculopathy, secondary to back pain. So radiculopathy is when you have a compressed nerve in the spine, L5-S1 joint in my case, and it can cause numbness, tingling, or weakness along the nerve. And it runs all the way down the back of your leg into your foot. So it can affect everything on the way down, through your thighs, your knees, your ankles, your calf, into your foot, heel, all the way into the ball of your foot. Uh, radiculopathy, is also known as sciatica as well. And as I mentioned, um, I get a shot, it's called a caudal epidural, and they stick it in uh, your back and a uh, big needle, not fun. Um, but that, when my radiculopathy gets really bad, it helps relieve the radiculopathy out of my left leg. Uh, you also may have this in both legs. Um, I only get it in my left leg at this point. Arthritis of the back, secondary to back pain. Um, degenerative arthritis of the back occurs when cartilage between joints erodes and uh, you get joint stiffness, limited mobility, and pain. If you're not moving your joints, they're not lubricated, they get stuck, and that causes pain. So arthritis um, typically... Uh, takes place in the big weight-bearing joints, kind of like the knees, the backs, and the hips. But it can happen anywhere. I have degenerative arthritis in my foot, for example. Knee condition secondary to back pain. So if you have a back problem and you're hobbling around like I do and my radiculopathy is really bad, 
um, you're going to favor one side or the other. I favor my left side, and that affects the right side of my body. Um, it's an uneven shift in weight, and the result of this is limping. Um, a more medical term for that is called an altered gait. So that's, uh, that's what the doctor's going to diagnose you with, or that's what they're going to call it. So altered gait is what you're looking for. Um, and that can happen, makes sense, right? Back pain, leg pain, causes problems in your knees, altered gait issues. Depression secondary to back pain. Um, I have a diagnosis for major depressive disorder. Uh, it's more related to combat PTSD, uh, but this is where pyramiding comes in with mental health conditions and you have to be careful with them because it is definitely damn depressing that I have lower back problems and I'm a gimpy guy and all that kind of stuff. And I have the combat PTSD and I have anxiety, but this particular one is called somatic symptom disorder and it's dealing with the uh, pain um, in my body because it's, it changes around a lot. Uh, depending on how you wake up, you'll have like, you know, like a good pain day or a bad pain day. And this all comes down to the joints and the lack of movement in the joints. Plantar fasciitis, secondary to lower back pain. So your nerve root is compressed, it shoots all the way down into your foot, and it causes plantar fasciitis. Uh, the altered gait thing will also come into play here. Uh, there's a few different factors um, that could cause plantar fasciitis. Um, again, you could have all sorts of problems just stemming from a little low ball 10% lower back rating, but you need to get that MRI. You might need to get a EMG test, a nerve conduction test where they, you know, hook up electrodes and, uh, you know, see if there's dead nerves and stuff like that. They have tests, but that's how you figure out like, okay, my plantar fasciitis is caused by my lower back. My knee condition is caused by my lower back. I have an altered gait thing going on. Then you might even have secondaries on top of secondaries, right foot caused by your left foot. And then depression obviously fits in. It is depressing uh, when you can't move around and you're in pain all the time. So let's talk about some potential ratings. Uh, radiculopathy in your right leg, 20%. Radiculopathy in your left leg, that could be 20%. Um, you could have radiculopathy across your thighs, 10% each thigh, depending on if you have it in both. Also, you might have the bilateral factor as well. Um, spinal fusion for the lumbar spine at the L5-S1. That could be 40%. Um, I'm actually, I already had cervical fusion and it didn't work. So I am going to avoid having a uh, surgery on my back. Uh, my back is not service connected, by the way. It's due to something that happened after service, but that could go from 10% to 40%. Um, you're going to have a scar from spinal fusion. When they did my neck surgery, I don't know if you can see it on video, but I have a little scar here. So that could be a 10% rating just for the scar when they open you up to do the surgery. And then the um, they can give you a rating for pain, painful motion on the back. That's another 10%. And then the mental health part, I mentioned somatic symptom disorder. That could be 30, 50, or 70%, depending on how much it affects your social and your work life. All right, this uh, graphic here shows spinal nerve function. Um, it has all the cervical spine, that's C1 through C7, the thoracic spine, T1 through T12, and then the lumbar spine, L1 through L5, and then at the bottom is the sacrum. Obviously, this is on the left side of the screen. Um, if we're going back up and talking about me, I have spinal fusion. It was called an anterior discectomy, um, C3-4, C4-5. So that's all fused together for me. Those joints aren't moving. They move as one. And then if you go all the way down to the bottom, L5 and then S1 is the sacrum. So I have a big herniated disc down there. So if you look at the area or organ, and um, I don't want to read all of these off. You can pause this screen and check it out. Uh, but if we're going to uh, thoracic one, for example, 
the area or organ it affects, heart, lungs, thymus, bronchial tubes, trachea, chest, breast, pleura, gallbladder, arms across shoulders, upper back and shoulder blades. Possible symptoms that you're having are heart conditions, asthma, bronchitis, indigestion, difficulty swallowing, nausea, headaches, fatigue, pleurisy, chronic coughing, shortness of breath, bloating after eating. So if you have a problem in one of these joints and one of your uh, organs is being affected by this herniated disc or whatever, you might have some of these symptoms and these are the symptoms that you wanna look at uh, if you're going to file a secondary service connection claim. Um, it's good for you to look at this and learn as much as you can, but you're going to need a doctor to actually make the call and uh, put the nexus down for you because you need the nexus. Uh, you're already service connected for your back. Now you're filing a secondary service connection claim and a doctor needs to explain why your asthma in T1 um, is secondary to your 10% low ball back rating, for example. Uh, this is a direct service connection for back pain example. I'm not gonna read it all. Again, you can uh, screenshot this and check it out, but you need a medical diagnosis or pain. Uh, you don't need a medical diagnosis of pain, by the way. Um, and the uh, little marker next to that says meet certain criteria. That criteria is in the CFR, the Code of Federal Regulations, the Schedule of Rating Disabilities. That is going to be your new friend. And I would also uh, have a companion friend, which is the M21-1 Adjudication Manual, which is what the VA Raiders go by. Also, I would get your claims file so you can see what's in your actual file. You need to know what you're up against and the law to make all this stuff work. So you need a medical diagnosis or pain, you need an in-service event, and then you need a link. Here's how the VA rates it. It's under 38 CFR 4.71A, the schedule of ratings, musculoskeletal system, and the criteria is based largely on a veteran's range of motion and functional loss. Pain is also a uh, factor. Generally speaking, you'll be required to attend a compensation and pension exam, a CNP exam, and the examiner will measure how far you can bend forward, backward, and side to side. He'll be using something called a goniometer, which is a little plastic protractor thing. Uh, just a note, if he doesn't bust out the goniometer and he's eyeballing you, um, that is an inadequate CNP exam potentially, so keep that in mind. He needs to be busting out something to measure you with. His eyes are not calibrated to measure the difference between 19 degrees and 20 degrees. Um, so they're gonna measure um, all these things, your flexion extension here, uh, your rotation, your lateral flexion. And as you see here, 10%, this is the rating criteria, 20%, 30%, 40%. Also, another note, 10% um, is a very common low ball back rating. 20% uh, is actually a pretty decent low ball back rating. When I say low ball, uh, anything below 30% is low ball. I'm not saying don't go after them. It's just probably what you're starting off with and you might want to increase it. But if you're going to go for an increase on the back itself, you're going to need to fall into this rating criteria for 40%. And then uh, here's another uh, graphic of the cervical spine. So when they're talking about zero degrees being straight up, when you're bending forward, they're gonna try to get you to go all the way to 45 degrees. If you can only go to five, like right here, and this is where you're feeling pain, stop right there. The doctor may say something like, oh, you could go a little farther. If you go a little farther, just to be friends with the doctor and impress him, uh, you're doing yourself no favors. You're never going to see this doctor again in your life. He is not your treating physician. He's only there at a compensation and pension exam to evaluate you uh, based on the claim that you filed. I created this channel to educate you guys about the VA claims process and get you thinking by showing you things like this, by teaching you about secondary service connections, 
And I'm teaching you from experience because I filed them and I won them and I'm 100% permanent and total as a result. If you want more education about the VA claims process, I'd head over to combatcraig.com and sign up for my boot camp. I go in depth in my boot camp, little differently than I do on the main channel. If you like this kind of content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Helps me out, gets the videos in front of more veterans, more veterans educate themselves and win their VA claims and get the proper rating and compensation that they deserved. And you earned, by the way, you served, you earned it. It's not a welfare deal. So I will see you in the next video.